Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial on histograms where we're going to be looking at how to interpret histograms and we're going to be going through the different questions you might come across at GCSE level. So let's have a look at this first question. So here we're given a histogram and we're told that on a coach there are 42 people aged between 20 and 30. The first part asks us how many people are on the coach? So we've been given the number of people aged between 20 and 30, which represents this class interval in this histogram. So let's just label this as 42. Now, given the fact that this is 42 and we know that the class width of this interval is 10, we can use the formula frequency is equal to frequency density, FD, times by the class width, which we derive from this formula to work out the frequency density of this class interval. So subbing these values in, we get that 42, the frequency is equal to the frequency density multiplied by 10, the class width. And dividing both sides of this equation by 10, we get that the frequency density of this class interval is equal to 4.2, which we can label on this graph. Now we need to find the frequencies of these other class intervals in order to calculate the total number of people on the coach. And the plan is to use this formula to do it. The class widths are fairly easy to calculate as we can see in this diagram, this class width would be 20. This is 10 as we said. This line is halfway between 50 and 60. So this class width would be 20 plus five, which is 25 and so on. Now notice that the frequency density axis hasn't been scaled. So we need to ensure that we have an appropriate scale on this axis in order to correctly determine the frequency densities for these remaining class intervals. So to work out the height of each square in terms of frequency density units, let's count the number of squares that lead up into 4.2 and then do 4.2 divided by that number. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one squares that lead up until four point two. And assuming that each square is the same size, well then to find the height of each square, we need to do four point two divided by twenty-one, which is zero point two. So now we know the height of each of these small squares, we can use this information to further label this frequency density axis, just to make the diagram clearer for us to read the frequency densities of all of these bars. So for the zero to 20 class interval, the frequency using this formula is equal to the frequency density, which is 2.2 multiplied by the class width, which is 20 and that's equal to 44. For this class interval, well, the frequency density is equal to one. And so the frequency is equal to one multiplied by the class width, and that gives you 25. For this class interval, the frequency density is two. And so the frequency is equal to two multiplied by a class width of 15, and that gives you 30. So now we have the frequencies for each bar which represents the number of people aged within these class intervals, all we need to do is add them all together to work out how many people are on the coach. And so the number of people on the coach is equal to 44 plus 42 plus 25 plus 30, which is equal to 141. Okay. The next question asks how many people on the coach are older than 30? Now using the histogram that we've just updated, the number of people older than 30 is equivalent to the total frequency that you can find in a class interval of values greater than 30. Now in this histogram, that class interval happens to be between 30 to 70. And therefore, the number of people older than 30 is equal to 25 plus 30, which is equal to 55. Okay, the next question asks us to estimate how many people were aged between 15 and 37? Now, in order to estimate how many people are aged between 15 and 37, let's first of all highlight this region on the histogram, which represents the area between 15, which is halfway between 10 and 20, 
and 37, which is somewhere here between 30 and 40. Now, we already know the frequency for the class interval 20 to 30. So we need to work out the frequency for the class interval 15 to 20 and 30 to 37. And just like before, let's use the formula to do this. So for the class interval 15 to 20, or well the frequency would be equal to the frequency density 2.2 multiplied by the class width, which is in this case five, which gives us 11. And for the class interval 30 to 37, or well the frequency would be equal to the frequency density one multiplied by seven, which would be the class width, which gives us seven. So by adding all of these corresponding frequencies, we can estimate that the number of people aged between 15 and 37 is 11 plus 42 plus seven, which is equal to 60, okay? Now the last part of this question says, explain why the answer to part C is only an estimate. Now this is an interesting question to look at because when we use histograms to represent group data, we assume that the data points are evenly distributed or evenly spread out across each class interval. Let's take for example the 20 to 30 class interval, where what we generally would assume is that there are 42 people who have ages that are spread evenly across this class interval 20 to 30. But in actual fact, this might not be the case. It may in reality be the case that there are only two people who are 22 years old and the remaining 40 people in this interval are actually 28 years old. Now we know precisely how many people fall within the class interval 20 to 30, it's 42. However, the calculations for the class interval 15 to 20 and 30 to 37 would be estimates. Because we don't know precisely how the other data points could be distributed within their class intervals. So a reason why part C would only be an estimate is because we don't know exactly how many people are aged between 15 and 20 and 30 to 37. Okay, let's have a look at the next problem. So we're told that there are 45 cars traveling between 50 and 70 miles per hour. Use a histogram to estimate how many cars were traveling between 80 and 120 miles per hour. So in this question, we're told how many cars fall within the class interval 50 to 70, which we can illustrate by shading that region on this histogram. Now we need to use this information to work out an estimate for the number of cars traveling between 80 and 120 miles per hour. Again, in this question, notice that we haven't been given a scaling for the frequency density axis. But a way we could approach this question is by using the fact that area is directly proportional to frequency. This tells us that we can work out the frequency within a particular class interval by working out its area. So we already know the frequency for this class interval is 45, as we were told in the question, but let's work out its area and then see what the relationship is between area and frequency for this particular histogram. Now, as long as you're consistent, you can actually choose any appropriate scaling for this frequency density axis in order to work out the heights of these bars for the area calculation. So the scaling I've used is as follows, where the height of one square is equal to 0 0.5 units. So starting with the class interval 50 to 60, the area of this bar would be equal to 10.5 multiplied by the width 10, which is equal to 105. And the area of this bar would be equal to five multiplied by 10 which is equal to 50. Now, as we've seen in previous tutorials, given the fact that the area is directly proportional to frequency, we can form an equation using the constant of proportionality. And the equation would be as follows, that therefore the area is equal to K times by frequency, where K is our constant of proportionality to be found. Now we have the area within this class, it's the sum of these values. And so the area between 50 and 70 miles per hour is equal to 105 plus 50, which is equal to 155 units squared. We also have the frequency for this class, which is equal to 45. So 
Subbing these values into this equation, we get that 155 units squared, the area, is equal to k times by 45 cars. Dividing both sides by 45, we get that k, our constant, is equal to 3.4 recurring. And so now we have our constant, which shows the relationship between area and frequency for this particular histogram. We can work out the frequency of the 80 to 120 class by calculating the area of this class interval. Okay, so using the diagram and the scaling, the area for the 80 to the 95 class would be 8.5 multiplied by 15, which is equal to 127.5. And the area for this bar would be the height, which is 3.5 multiplied by the width, which is 25 which is equal to 87.5. So we can work out the total area for the bars between 80 and 120 meters per hour by simply adding these two values to get 215 units squared. And since we have this value and K, we can substitute into this equation to work out the frequency. And so the number of cars between 80 and 120 miles per hour is equal to 215 divided by 3.4 recurring, which is equal to 62.41 and so on, which is approximately equal to 62 cars. And as we've been asked to estimate, you could have rounded up or down to the nearest unit. Okay. Now, as said earlier, you could have chosen any appropriate scaling for this frequency density axis. And whilst it may have given you a different value of K, you would have got exactly the same answer. So I certainly suggest you have a go with a different scaling to the one I've used and see if you get the right answer. Okay. So to summarize, we've looked at different ways to interpret histograms using the special formula, frequency density is equal to the frequency divided by the class width. We've looked at the importance of appropriate scaling in cases where the diagram doesn't give a scale. We've talked about the assumptions that we make about the distribution of the data points within these different intervals. And lastly, we saw how we can interpret histograms by using the relationship between area and frequency for histograms. Okay, so I hope that was somewhat useful for you. Keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.